Hail has always been the worst weather effect in competitive singles. A team style reliant on running multiple ice types, which is a terrible defensive type, is bound to have a plethora of issues. But Gen 9 has attempted to give this weather effect some new tools and a bit more identity. In Gen 9, Hail has been redesigned and is now called Snow. Instead of dealing chip damage every turn to all Pokemon that aren't ice type, now ice types have 1.5 times defense while Snow is active. A new Pokemon was released in Gen 9 to provide these Snow teams with a new offensive tool, Satitan. This is a new Pokemon with the ability Slush Rush, which provides you with double speed during the snow. Satitan has interesting stats for a Pokemon with an ability like this. It has an enormous HP stat, probably to offset the poor Mono Ice defensive typing and get more out of that Snow defense boost. It has a decent attack stat and offensive move pool, as well as access to Belly Drum. These teams were also given a new weather move in Gen 9, which is actually one of my favorite new move designs. Slow King was granted with the move Chilly Reception, a move that creates the snow effect and then switches you out. Combining a weather setting move and a pivot move on a solid defensive Pokemon with Regenerator is genius, giving these teams something they sorely needed, a bit of defensive backbone and a way to pivot into the snow abusers on a Pokemon that benefits their snow plan that isn't an ice type. Unfortunately, Satitan has not not been able to compete with the heavy hitters of Gen 9 OU very effectively, and has dropped all the way down to the RU tier. However, a new patron, Biff the Banana, has tasked me with trying to make a Satitan plus Slowking team work in Gen 9 OU. They've sent me their version of the team, and here I am to test it out and make alterations. Can we make this Pokemon work in OU? Jimothy Cool, the team doctor, is here to attempt the impossible. Let's give it a go. If you'd like to send me a team to test and build upon in one of these videos, check out my Patreon link in the description for more information. Like this video and subscribe to the channel for more informative content about competitive Pokemon. Here it is folks, the original version of the team submitted by Biff the Banana, tier 3 patron, thank you for the support. We've got this Serial Edge with a clear amulet, a Pormot, a physically biased Iron Valiant, of course we have the Silicon plus the Titan combo, and a Glamora. Now, I'll show you my first variant of the team. I think some issues I noticed immediately was... I don't know if a Glamora fits here. It's too easy for the enemy to remove hazards. Benefits more alongside Goldengo. I think that you want to go more on the side of offense outside of hazards. There's something that on this slot that I think could benefit the squad more. Serilege, I don't love the clear amulet. I don't think that does much. I also think that uh, we're a bit vulnerable to enemy... Stealth Rock and Spikes. We do have boots on this Pormont, but what about the Serral Edge and the Satitan getting destroyed by Stealth Rock? So here was my first idea. We've got the version 1 of the squad, folks. I went ahead and put a boots on the Serral Edge, and I added Hatterin in place of the Glamora. I thought that this made more sense. We can Magic Bounce to support Satitan and Serral Edge, who are both weak to rock. And we have Eject Button to pivot more effectively on this offensive game plan. We have, you know, Healing Wish is always nice with Satitan with Orthworm. Oh, by the way, we've got Orthworm. I think fits more than Pormot. Biff the Banana in the original message mentioned that they put Pormot as a replacement for Cyclozar. But Cyclozar recently was banned from the format. Honestly, I think that Orthworm is the true replacement for Cyclozar. Orthworm is not bad. Even though it's no Cyclozar in terms of repeatedly being able to shed tail, knock off, spin support, all that... Orthworm could shed tail, but it's also, honestly, it physically walls, like, Dragonite. Dragonite can't really touch list unless they run Fire Punch. Many sets don't. It can help it get some, uh, something like Great Tusk. It's got the ground immunity plus steel. It's a beautiful little combination of traits, and it's a form of Stealth Rock. I don't think that we want Spikes on a team without Goldengo to hard block the defogs, so I went with Heavy Slam. If it was a Goldengo on the squad, on a different squad, I would do Spikes. This one, we're doing Heavy Slam and Body Press. I like, I put 20 speed EVs on the Orthworm. It's for enemy Skeledurge. This lets you just outrun Skeledurge. Skeledurge can be disastrous for you. They Torch Song, they destroy you. will o wispy whatever. You want to outrun that. I think you also outrun some Corviknights with this set if they don't invest. And I replaced the Iron Valiant set with the standard one. The specially 
biased set with close combat. I think that this gets more out of Iron Valiant. Thunder Punch, in a world where Corviknight runs Rocky Helmet so often, in a world where Don Dozer can shrug that off with his massive physical damage. The purpose of electric coverage is to hit Don Dozo, it's to hit Corviknight. These are the important Pokemon you want to hit, and special attack is better for that. There's a reason this is the standard set on Iron Valiant right now. It fits better. And close combat does the trick as physical coverage. Fighting coverage, it hits King Gambit, it hits Ting Lu. The steel types, you hit, I don't know, Orthworm. Random things that Terra Steel, like Garganical or something. It makes more sense, it's high power, you get more out of it, whereas uh, if you go physical attack on this and do Moonblast as your coverage, it's a lower power move. It's less useful generally. Something like a Dragon type can shrug it off a little bit better if you're not invested, whereas this Moonblast will be destroying Dragon types. Slowking, I left unchanged for the moment, it's an okay set. I will say that light screen has not been something I've ever had time to click ever, and Sir Titan. I, I will admit that uh, this set was incorrect. You're supposed to put the four EVs on the into HP. I found this out the hard way mid-battle, when Belly Drum did not activate my Citrus Berry. You need even number health, folks, if you want to... You've got to be on 50% for Citrus Berry to activate, so if you're not even number, it'll be 51%, and you'll be in a disastrous position. You're going to be in trouble. You're not going to eat your berry, which you need to do. It's important. So let's take a look at this replay with the team. This Seraledge Boots variant featuring Hatterin. Let's see how this fared. We're up against a Dragonite, and this is an example of what I was saying where Orthworm can be great against Dragonite. Sometimes I shed tail out. Orthworm's got the right amount of health. It ate the berry. And I go to Sir Titan, and this will invite Dragonite to Terra Normal. So it doesn't get destroyed by Ice Spinner. And then I go back to Orthworm. Now that you're Terra Normal, Earthquake I'm immune to, and I can actually hit you with Body Press super effectively, so we're going to get through this Dragonite like that. E-Speed is the only attack you can hit me with, which is not great. Against the Corviknight Defogging, we can get Slow King in and pivot into our incredible Sir Titan if we want to. But in fact, we don't. We can't do that. We've got to go to Hatterin. This is where I realized an issue with the team, which is that Dondoza was a little bit of a difficult matchup. On a team that kind of... Sir Titan with Belly Drum is the main form of offense. Dondozo stops you and your tracks completely. So does Skeledurge. So do these unaware walls that are so common right now. And we don't have that much special firepower to break through Dondozo elsewhere. We do have Iron Valiant, great special attacker. But it's only a booster energy Iron Valiant. It's not a set that you want to switch. It's a game ending set with a one time resource. Not a great situation here where I kind of want to use that Iron Valiant to outrun this Chen Pao and, and enemy Iron Valiant, but then I also have to do special damage to get through this stupid Dondozo, so I'm in a little bit of a rough position. I go for Nuzzle on the Dondozo. It curses up, and luckily Hatterin's Psychic can actually do a lot of damage to this, so we've got something for Dondozo. We've got something. It gets full powered, which is very fortunate. We can get another Psychic off, which is great damage, and then it's forced to rest leaving it a little bit more crippled. I believe I just psychicked again. I do have my eject button, so if anything ever hits me, I'm going to pivot out. We go Orthworm. A final time. I go for the rock as the Corviknight leaves, I believe. Yep, the Corviknight's going to U-turn out. So we at least get the rock up, which immediately paid off against this Chen Pao. Sack Earthworm at this point. And I go to Ledge here, because I think it's likely he will hit me into my Sash. Which activates weak armor. And I can take out the Chin Pao while healing back a little bit. I figured I'd use that just to guarantee that Chin Pao doesn't stick around for the remainder of the game. He's going to be tempted to click that crunch. So, if for example I went to Booster Iron Valiant. You could easily switch, switch out to Corviknight or something. Claude Sire. Although I have Psy Shock to threaten Claude Sire, I have Thunderbolt to threaten both these guys. Iron Valiant almost could have cleaned the game, but there is still the enemy Iron Valiant. Seraledge is not that useful outside of this situation, I think. I mean, it gets so hard walled by Dondozo that Dondozo has to die before Seraledge does anything, so I think that that was a good use of Seraledge right there, just to guarantee Chen Pao exited the battle. Now I get Iron Valiant in, even though before I wasn't using it. Now I need it. I figured there's no way I'm preserving the booster energy for the perfect moment. That was actually a misclick, this Terra Fairy. I was think I was seeing, you know, maybe I'll Terra Fairy Moonblast, is it more damage? Found out that Thunderbolt isn't that much less damage, so I could save my Terra, but then I didn't uncheck the box. 
So I did this Terra Fairy that did nothing. Didn't even do anything, so... Misclick there. We Psy Shock the Clod Sire. To chip it down. In comes Slow King. This is the nice thing about rocks is you can force a Corviknight to defog, which does give you a free turn to do stuff. So, it's like, the rocks give you a temporary little advantage. We chip the Chimp Power a bit, chip the Dondozo a bit, the Corviknight a bit, and then they do have to defog, which wastes a turn. So, that's why Stealthrog is still valuable, even if they have the defogger. You still get a little bit out of it. I foolishly go for a close combat, thinking that'll do anything other than peanuts to Dondozo. It's done, you know, peanuts. It's on 18%. I really should have gone with a different maneuver. The hat. is still able to threaten Dondozo massively with its enormous special attack. Wave Crash is going to allow me to pivot into Iron Valiant in the perfect scenario. I do kill this. It has chipped itself down with the recoil ever so. And I click Fairy Move. I don't know why this fellow went to Iron Valiant here. That was dangerous. I'm Terra Fairied. Moonblast kills. And that secures the game for me. So that was a dubious one, folks. That was rough. We do have a little bit of special firepower to break through Dondozo, but you can see how this could be a problem if, you know, my opponent honestly made some poor decisions. I wonder if the Clod Sire was Terra Dark. If so, that would have been a way to kind of destroy me because I wouldn't be able to Sire Shock Clod Sire anymore. Terra Dark is common on this because it blocks st stuff like stored power from Espathra. Let's you take advantage of Unaware. Maybe ter Terra Fairy Iron Valiant could still break through it, but it has such enormous special defense. So I'd, I'd hit you with version 2 of the squad right here, which is, uh, I actually made a lot of changes here. So I went ahead and replaced Serra Ledge with a Focus Sash Breloom. Because I figured, you know, the Spore is such instant momentum for a team like this. You want Spore because it's just big. This is a team that wants to go quick. It wants to go to the, go for the throat. So I think a Spore Breloom fits here. Plus it gives you a little option versus that Dondozo, which is an absolute bastard for this team. Generally fits very nicely in this metagame. Always gonna get a little bit of value. Mark Punch helps versus like Chin Pao and King Gambit and stuff like that. And we're doing a Terra Blast Fire set which helps you versus Corviknight and even like Scizor, who could be a poor matchup. We're keeping the Earthworm. I changed Iron Valiant to a Specs Iron Valiant because I think that we need that Freedom to switch it in without wasting a resource, you know, and we need that special firepower. We need something to nuke. The thing I love about Specs Iron Valiant, it can kind of nuke everything with that fairy. You tear a fairy on this and it kind of just hits the entire world. Even if they resist it, something like Corviknight coming in is not like I think that often Corviknight, after a little bit of chip, still gets two hit by this this uh, Terra Fairy Moonblast, and then you hit stuff like Giganical, Dondozo. All of these common Pokemon just get destroyed by this. And then you even have coverage options to hit the steals that would otherwise destroy you. You've got Shadow Ball, which is beautiful coverage. Psy Shock. Destroy Clod Sire, who is a special wall that's really common. It's a special threat that can kill one of the most common special walls in like one hit. So you get more out of it on this squad. You want that, this guy's in and now I'm threatening the entire world. Rather than this guy's in and now I'm late game cleaning. I think that that booster energy set fits better on Spike's teams that want to set up spikes, chip things down, and then once everything's chipped, you switch in the Iron Valiant and it's over. Cleans it up. It's faster than everything and it, and it cleans the game. But on this team, I think that the immediate threat of the specs is more valuable. And I kept the Hatterin set for the moment. For the moment, I kept the Hatterin set. So let's take a look at this game with the new Breloom version of the squad. I lead with the Orthworm. And I dodge a Focus Blast because I'm skillful. I didn't think that enemy would go for a Focus Blast right out of the gate. I half considered Terra Ghost, because Terra Ghost is what you run on Orthworm. It lets you block Rapid Spin or dodge fighting attacks, but didn't go for it here. Did not do it. Maybe I should have, but we get away with Murder here, and we get the free pivot to Slow King, and I go ahead and do the funny chili reception. I don't know if this was even the best way to go, but what's noteworthy is... Clod Sire is the only unaware Pokemon who is gets owned by Ice Spinner anyway. So that means Sir Titan actually looks pretty good in this matchup. We kind of threaten everything. So we do go Sir Titan. And I figured, you know, he doesn't know what Sir Titan I am. I could easily be Choice Band and I'm just threatening you immediately right now. You don't know I'm Belly Drum, so I go for the Belly Drum. And this is when I realized that, of course, the uh, the health is wrong. I'm on 51%. Forgive me for this blunder, folks. Forgive me. 
Although I will say I did copy the set from Biff the Banana on Patreon, so I, uh, my hands are clean here. This is Biff the Banana's fault. Just kidding, Biff the Banana. We all make mistakes, of course. I've done this myself on uh, in Gen 3. Wrong health amount. Lose a game because of it. But didn't matter too much here. We still, you know, I had to calc this one. Terra Ice does, in fact, let you one-hit Corviknight, even if they're full defense. And the Rocky Helmet lets me eat my berry. So thanks, Rocky Helmet. That's great. And this is where, you know, the game is kind of unfair and it's sick joke. Because a Great Tusk, the Terra Fightings, can actually live... Plus six, Ice Spinner, Terra Ice from Sir Titan. I mean, I feel like that's just wrong. I don't think anything should live this neutrally, but we live in an unfair world where Great Tusk can destroy our dreams. So that was an unfortunate little situation, but Sir Titan did at least take out Corviknight and chip this down to one health. So that's something. That's something, you know. That's pretty good. We made him spend the Terra, his Chin Pow. And for some reason, I didn't muck punch here. I could have just muck punched. I thought that something was up. I thought that he might Terra fighting to dodge muck punch, so I went for bullet seat. But of course, he just Terra fighting. What was I thinking? Something about the switch straight into Chin Pao against Breloom. I was like, how could you be so stupid? Of course, you're going to go for some nonsense. But no, nothing happened. He just was willing to lose Chen Pao. Muck punch, of course, just kills Chen Pao. Would have kept my sash if I simply made the better play, but... Here's Iron Valiant, where I can click Shadow Ball against this. It's it's likely Scarfed, so I think this is my best way to threaten this fella. We are a little bit weak against Goldango, I will say. Our most main special wall is Sloking, who is Ghost Weak. We also have Hatterin, who is Ghost Weak. So, it's not a great situation for anti-Goldango moments. I'm forced into taking 75% on my Iron Valiant right here to actually deal with this thing. But hopefully this is a team where you can keep pressure up enough that you're never on the back foot against Goldengo. Hopefully, I don't know. This is the issue where we kind of forced into running Slow King for Chili Reception. And I think we're kind of forced into running Hatterin too for the anti-Hazards. How are you going to not get owned by Hazards if you're not running Hatterin, right? So Titan just hates Stealth Rock. But it could be that I'm a fool. I think this was a longer end game. This is weird because Clodsai cannot touch my Orthworm, but I can barely... Do much damage to it, so we're just sitting here twiddling our thumbs for a bit. I'm clicking body press repeatedly. I get Hatterin in one time. We go for the Psychic, which actually two hits from here, but then I Earthquake, which pivots me out. This is where I realized that maybe Eject Button doesn't fit on this squad, actually, because I have not really found it super useful. It hasn't really given me many opportunities to pivot, and even if I do get a pivot off, my pivots in aren't great anyway. I have two other Pokemon that aim to pivot. So I, I actually changed the Hatterin set after this. After this game, I realized that the eject button was putting me in awkward situations more than it was helping. But I still wanted Hatterin, so I changed the set, and I'll show you after what I changed it to. We have Psychic. We're out-damaging the Clod. It's wasting its recovers, and it finally drops to the Psychic plus Heavy Slam from Orthworm. And here's Garganical. And I actually lost this battle, folks. I forgot. <laughs> I couldn't beat this Garganical. Because he breaks my sub and then just salt kills me. But I kept this uh, replay in to show that uh, show the flaws of the team. The fact that this Hatterin was putting me in awkward spots. The fact that we're so weak to Goldengo. The fact that Garganical is, is cleaning up this game. And also, all the Sir Titan, unfortunately, almost swept the whole game. But of course, Great Tusk lives on one health. So, we, we made alterations. We made alterations. What I've done is I've made this an Assault Vest Hatterin. With a Psy Shock instead of Psychic, Psy Shock hits Clod Sire, and this lets you be more of a special wall, even if you still, we don't have like a Ghost Resistance anymore. At least Assault Vest gives you that little bit of bulk, you can nuzzle Goldango maybe. And I also replaced Light Screen with Flamethrower, because I thought that Flamethrower was more useful against Scizor, who was a kind of a problem too. Look at a Scizor U-turn, a Scizor, it kind of threatens everything, it bullet punches this, close combat's this, you know just hits everything, so I do go with a flamethrower on this. I was running Terra Fighting, but I think I realized the Terra Fairy is a better way to go on this Slow King. Let's you resist Dark, and I believe Bug resists is resisted by Fairy as well. Here's a little bit of Satitan Triumph. Chin Power goes for the ultimate gambit of Terra Fighting Sacred Sword. I do a body press. I think I'm happy that he's wasting that resource so early, even though it just killed my Earthworm. We can Bullet Seed in the face of this guy, and I use my Terra Fire. Which allows me to resist make it rain and take out this gold anchor. Beautiful stuff. I can now mark punch the Chen Pao, chip it down a little bit more. 
in his Iron Valiant, who can live a crunch. I go for a simple Moon Blast. I could have done a Thunderbolt because it killed as well, but I don't want to be locked in against these ground types. So that's why I went for Moon Blast. And Slow King, getting an opportunity for a chilly reception moment right here. This is a moment. And Skeledurge being a little bit of a nuisance. We, we go to Iron Valiant. We try to get the big Shadow Ball off and we get it. We get the crucial damage against Skeledurge. We get burned. Big whoop. I go to Titan on the switch out. It's my genius decision of going to Titan, And then I go back to Iron Valiant. What have I done? To commit to Belly Drum would be a throw because Skeledurge is still up and it can Terra. No, it can't. Does, does Skeledurge simply die to Earthquake? Maybe that was the Belly Drum moment and I just threw. You notice, folks, when you look back at your replays, the situations where you could have been a little bit better. I'll be honest, I was losing a lot of points testing these teams. These are the highlights, if that tells you anything. The Satitan team was kind of... My, my rating has plummeted since I was since testing Satitan. This is a hard Pokemon to use effectively in OU. This is, is really typical Jim making excuses. But we can go Satitan, of course, here. We have the we have the snow defense boost allowing us to shrug off a Chien Pao. I go for the Ice Shard. And now an Earthquake will take out Skeledurge. Very simply and effectively. And Ice Shard will take this out. I don't know what this guy was thinking. Ice Shard takes you out, you absolute buffoon. How could you have been so stupid? In comes Slow King. We get knocked off. We can't make snow anymore. Who needs snow though? Here's Hatterin to clean up the game. And here's why I put Psyshock on the squad, folks. Look at this. We deal with the Clod Sire. We'll deal with the Great Tusk. And we deal with the Corviknight. We Mystical Fire this guy. It's over. We have Psyshock. And of course we have Dazzling Gleam. And then Iron Valley, it finishes it off. So Titan did things in that game. It took out the, the Chen Pao. It switched in safely thanks to the Snow Boost. It had double speed for a brief moment in time. It hit some crucial ice shards. It earthquaked the Skeledurge. So Titan proved itself as one of the greatest Pokemons that Gen 9 OU has ever seen in this battle. The results speak for themselves, folks. The thing about team building, folks, is that sometimes the simplest solution is the best solution. There's no need to reinvent the wheel with this stuff. I had was tunnel visioned on this Hatterin idea, but Hatterin makes no sense. It conflicts with the Sloking. It makes us too weak versus common Pokemon. We need structural integrity. And Great Tusk provides this. With the Salt Vest Great Tusk, we do have Spin, anti-hazard technology. But we also have anti-Goldengo, which is the thing we need the most. And when you destroy Goldengo this hard, with the Assault Vest improving your special bulk, finding a spin is much easier. So we not only spin more effectively, we are an anti-hazard situation. This threatens Clod Sire as well. This is exactly what we needed. The Great Tusk. And... I noticed the results instantly. Here we are with a game shortly after I had this incredible revelation that putting Great Tusk on my Gen 9 team was the solution, as it is in many scenarios. This was a weird one. That was a lot of damage from Dragapult right there. I led with Great Tusk in this game because a Goldengo lead could screw me over. The Breloom lead isn't great versus Goldengo. Great Tusk would stop Goldengo. It would stop, you know, Dragapult maybe. But I didn't want to risk Will-O-Wisp, so that's why I switched out turn 1 to Slow King. Turned out to be a U-turn with high damage. But here we are. Go Great Tusks right in the face of Goldengo and you'll be right. Of course, this was a very anti-Great Tusk Goldengo. I went with the knockoff in case of this, in case something like this happened. And that's fine. We do sack Great Tusk in this position, but he's committed to his Terra. He's going all in. And the Iron Valiant can finish this off swiftly. It's no Scarf. No problem. We've traded with Goldengo effectively. He wasted his Terra. I'm up in this game because I have my Terra. He doesn't. We can make rocks right here. And we can get a Shed Tail off in the face of this Rotom. Rotom is kind of an annoyance in the face of Sir Titan because you can't kill it when you're at plus six and it threatens to Will-O-Wisp you. So you really got to chip this a little bit more. I believe plus six Terra Ice. Ice Spinner does like 75%-ish to Rotom. So you really got to chip him down quite a bit to be able to clean with the Sir Titan. But we do get something out of the Sir Titan this game anyway. So Breloom is my preferred Shed Tail receiver. Bullet Seed will not make contact with this Rocky Helmet if it exists. So that's always nice. We can spore the incoming Corviknight. That's free progress. And I go to Slow King and I get my free pivot while this Corviknight's asleep. In comes Dragapult. We pivot to Sir Titan. And we don't even need to belly drum right here to threaten this Dragapult. We just get him. 
We just click the button very simply. That's a KO on Dragapult. Enormous progress being made right there. Force in Rotom. Force the Rock Chip. Orthworm comes in on the burn like clockwork, folks. It's that easy. It's that simple. I just body press, which ended up being good here because I Rocky Helm myself, which allows me to pivot out, not give this Corviknight any extra turns to, to wake up. We get Iron Valiant in. I go for the Terra Fairy Moonblast because if I lock into Thunderbolt, Ting Lu comes in. But if I Terra Fairy Moonblast, I can two-hit Corviknight from here while threatening everything else. And even shielding me from Iron Valiant Moonblast. Iron Valiant is forced in. Nothing else can do anything to me. And then, of course, we live the Moonblast. We Moonblast back. It's just that easy. And Moonblast threatens to KO both of these fellas, and that's a victory. And Sir Titan did help. We got that crucial KO on Dragapult. If we didn't commit to the Iron Valiant Terror, we could have, you know, gotten a Belly Drum Ice Shard situation going to take out Iron Valiant and the remainder of the Pokemon. But it's hard to get going with this Titan. But we've got enough going on that we're not as all in on it, I think, as is evidenced in this game. And you can get out, get stuff out of it without having to commit to Belly Drum, as we showed here. You know, Ice Ground is great coverage. You are. You know, threatening Dragapult. It probably stayed because it was thinking I belly drum. It wanted to prevent that, but then even if I'm forcing and Rotom in that position, I'm chipping it down, which lets me makes me belly drum later and maybe win. It would take rocks and a bit of chip. I can get a switch in. I can do stuff. I got plenty of options. So I think that this version of the team feels good to me. We've got Breloom, just provided a lot that game. We've got a Spore. We've got the Iron Valiant. Helping us in the department of breaking through stuff without needing to commit to any boosts. You can hit through common defensive Pokemon without needing anything in that game. It just secured the game right there. Slow King with the Flamethrower. This helps you hit steals. And the Great Tusk AV rounds it out perfectly. I don't think this is the greatest team of all time by any stretch. But uh, I think this can function well enough. Probably. You can probably build on it further. Optimize the Terra types, the spreads, the e the maybe to replace Breloom could be replaceable, Valiant could be replaceable. Vibe it out. Biff the banana. I hope this is a, if it's not a good final product, at least it's a nice jumping off point for you to keep building on this team, and maybe make Sir Titan work if you insist on such a thing. I honestly don't think Sir Titan is very good. I think that you could replace Slow King and Sir Titan here with other offensive Pokemon and be a lot better, but. If you were insistent on the Slow King Sir Titan thing, there is... The Sir Titan was doing stuff in these games. It wasn't the worst thing in the world. The Slow King... I actually quite like Slow King as a defensive pivot. It feels really nice. And I think Slow King plus Great Tusk ends up being a good defensive core. They cover each other quite well. Slow King can come in on, like, water types. Great Tusk can come in on, like, the, the ghost types that threaten Slow King. And do things like U-turns and other such nonsense. And then Orthworm supports both of them with Grass Resistance and Ground Immunity and being a good Steel type. So you've got a, like a defensive core that pivot and support, and then you got your offensive fellas that go crazy. Hopefully you like the team, Biff the Banana. And thank you for the submission. That was a more difficult one, to be honest. Hard to build around Sir Titan. Hard to get that Pokemon to work, but it kind of works. It kind of works. If you guys want to submit a team, as I said earlier, become a Tier 2 patron for, that, for this style of video. And if you're a tier 3 patron, you can also request any video topic for me to cover. I recently did a Azumarill video upon the request of a patron, Aaron C. Thank you for that one. And Biff the Banana, you are free to request a video topic from me as well. I provide value to the patrons like nobody else. I have such analysis, such genius analysis and team building prowess that you won't see anywhere else on YouTube. I'm just that powerful. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching. And goodbye.